All right, guys. This is video is going to be about the thermal siphoning concept and some mistakes that I made, some things that I learned while building the thermal siphoning rocket stove. It's also going to be about water stratification. So I'm going to be adjusting the camera a little bit here, so I'm zooming in so you can see my details a little, so we can go over this. All right. So first thing I want to show you is is I want to show you how I actually did the rocket stove. And that's going to be that detail right there, that A and B detail right here. So what I did is I came up about 16 inches here, and I went over to my coil here, right? And as my coil turned it into pressure from boiling the water and making vapor, it'll push it up and returns it back here. When I did that, I wasn't thinking of my heat. I was thinking of the loop and get it to revolve the loop and wanted to see how uh, resistant the water was to stratification. What I ended up with was 75 degree or 72, 75 degree water on bottom here in this area here and 150 degree water up on top, which obviously is not too much homogenization and not really using, I'm not heating up all of my water, so I'm probably not storing the, you know, the BTUs that I, quite, I could be storing. So, if I had it to do over again, what I would do is I would have my return or going to my coil very low here and then just six inches above it come back in, right? Because it will make that loop, and the reason it'll make that loop is there's less water above this hole than there is this hole. So when the pressure builds up here, it'll take the easiest path of least resistance and it will come back up. And as it comes here, which is lower in the water, it will disperse that heat into more of the water as it rises up through the water. So, instead of doing it here and having it return here, I would suggest put very low and have it return just six to eight inches up above it because when it returns, it's not going to naturally come back down and go back down. It's going to, it's going to go, it's going to heat, it's going to rise, and it's going to heat more of that water. It's going to heat that water more evenly. Let me back you out so you can get a different view of another detail here. So let's talk about it in a, in a two barrel system. Like what would work, what would work for two barrels? Okay. So this again is what I initially tried to, to do. And because of my elevation, I couldn't push it up over here. But besides that, I still was coming out here and returning over here. Well, what that was, what that would have caused is, is that hot water would have turned over here up high, and that hot would have set right up here at the top. And so the hottest of that water would have leaked over here and set right up here at the top. And then it would have to go against its natural tendency to rise to go down and cool to come back. So would it work? Yes, it'll work. And kinda. This extra, this cold water at the bottom would, would keep it from, you know, ever getting boiling because it's almost like a, an insulated cool spot down here when you have the return higher going to, the, when you have the part going to the coil higher than whatever water's below it. That water below it is really kind of an insulated a little area down there that stays good and cool. And uh, so here's another possible way. Uh, and you'll see that I got this link in here, uh, low and high. So this will set up a natural convection, but it's still going to tend to stratify a lot. It's still going to, uh, the top half of the barrels are going to be way more advantageous uh, or be more, way hotter than the lower parts. So the uh, third way, let me make sure you can see this over here. And I'm kind of going to zoom in here because this is kind of hard to see. It's got some detail to it. Uh, the third way here is the two barrels is, is I come off the bottom here going to my coil, right? Uh, and the return point here to center of this barrel, I got R here by return point because I didn't want to come across these other lines to, met, to confuse you anymore. And so what I did off of this first barrel is I went off the high point down low, and then I went off the high point down low here. So what this will do is this water returns here, it will heat the water as it comes up through it, will disperse its heat off into the rest of the water. The warmest of water will stratify to the top. The warmest water will drop down and flow to cold over in this barrel. As this barrel stratifies and it gives off the heat and it rises to the top, 
that will go back down and flow hot to cold and flow to the coldest area here and then hopefully rise back up and come back out your return point. So this is definitely a much better uh, th thorough heating of the water due to the stratification. All right, so I'm going to back you guys out now. So I thought those things were worth bringing up. And one other thing that I thought was worth bringing up in this thermal siphoning system, and that is using these thermal siphoning systems when you have an abasement, right? Because uh, you got, the, obviously, the thermal siphoning, you got the uh, elevation issue already solved. So you realize you can set a wood stove or a rocket stove in the basement, put the water coil on it, and use the thermal siphoning to transport the heat upstairs. Now you could, you don't have to use an ugly barrel upstairs to transport your heat to. This, this deal could actually be a radiator. It could be a steel radiator, any kind of decorative container that would hold water and give off the heat if you wanted to set it out in the room. You just fill the system up and it would naturally thermal siphon and bring the heat up. That would be pretty neat there. But you could also do the thermal siphoning in just a drum and put it in the closet and then let the heat off as you wanted it to. So I thought these were pretty good uh, thoughts to be thinking about on how you're going to set up your thermal, your thermal siphoning. And I wanted to point out to you guys that I am getting uh, you know, a 75 degree temperature difference on these thermal siphonings off, of uh, off that stove. It's 75 at the bottom while it's 150. So uh, I think this is... Uh, at least the beginning. It's not the full definite, or not the full uh, understanding, but this is at least the beginning of considering your heat flow when you're setting up your thermal siphoning systems. Thanks for watching.